Hello and welcome to the PASCOM uh, training video series. Uh, as we have talked about in the past, we are going to go through the virtual phone system setup. Um, so if you are looking to run your uh, PBX in your virtual infrastructure uh, in, uh, as an on-premise solution, these are the steps you need to follow. Um, there are a few bits and pieces that you need to be aware of first. Matthias, what are they? Yeah, you should have a virtual machine uh, stack running. Mm -hmm. Uh, we support several of them. Uh, here is a list. We have VMware, we have Hyper-V, Xen, and Proxmox. Proxmox is basically a KVM uh, yeah. infrastructure. Okay. Um, what does mean support? Does it not run on other systems? We don't know. We only test those. Yeah. Um, it could work somewhere else, but those are the tested. Most people are using VMware and Hyper-V mm -hmm. as um, the general um, standard. Yeah, yeah. For, for, for somehow. Um, some people use Proxmox, so the Linux side of the mm -hmm. world is using Proxmox because it's very convenient and easy uh, to manage KVM solution. Okay. Then uh, the next thing is how big should the machine be? What power that's, do you need? Yeah, that's sort of... Uh, dependent on your particular needs. So the number of users you have, uh, how many recordings and so on you're gonna make. Yes, but we, we made a, we tried to make a table to mm -hmm. make things easy. So this is just an estimation for sure. But you can see at least you should have two cores assigned to the virtual machine. You should have at least two gigabytes of RAM and at least 32 gigs of hard drive. Okay. Um, why? Two cores is, um, we have a lot of processes which mm -hmm. can share cores. So you have one for the telephony real-time system. Mm -hmm. You have one for everything which is chat related and statistics and whatever. And it's a good idea to have at least two cores that you can share the load on yeah, multiple The most cores. important point here is that it's real-time. It's real-time. Yeah. So, uh, so one you core want should be. One core, yeah. yeah, you want to be able to share it to make sure that that actually is working yes. real-time. Um, then the RAM, yeah, we start the machine, we start the infrastructure and then we start one phone system mm -hmm. and you need at least a two gigabyte of RAM and the hard disk goes the very same. So then if you have more users at some point in time you need more cores but not necessarily and the RAM also grows. Why? Because we have um, uh, for our chat statistics whatever server um, you need more RAM if you have more users connected mm -hmm. because it has yeah, for everybody something in the RAM. Yeah. So that grows. Hard disk normally does not grow, so this is just an estimation. For mm -hmm. sure you have more, if you have more telephony uh, ongoing, you have more CDR records, yeah. so channel, who calls whom and whatever, mm -hmm. uh, but this is not so much. Um, it's just a table uh, in, in the database and it grows for every call uh, about a few lines. But what can be massive is recording yes yeah. and if you do call recording not many people do but we have a really nice integration also in the clients and mm -hmm. you can just click and see who is whom recording automatic recording everything yep. mm -hmm. possible if you like and then it can be massive so it's not so bad so you have one megabyte of storage for one minute or every 10 minutes it depends on the codec you're using so for sure but if you calculate with one megabyte for 10 minutes, it's okay for G711. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what most uh, people use. Uh, it does not sound much, but if you have a lot of calls ongoing, then for sure. Yeah, if you've got high call volumes where you're doing a lot of recording, that suddenly becomes rather large very quickly. Yes. Yeah. So this is one thing you have to prepare. Then for sure, because of the timing and because of its real time, mm -hmm. you should not overload your uh, your virtual machine stack. So if you have 100 machines ongoing on a 3 node cluster, maybe it's not a good idea to add this. So it really has to have the CPU in time. Mm -hmm. um, you can do for VMware, for instance, you can do a reservation. You can uh, the, uh, set the CPU scheduling to high, yep. if you like, um, to uh, be real time at, or to be more like real time mm -hmm. at that point. But you can just try it out. In most scenarios, it's just good from the start, okay. but there are some tricks. But if you have the option of reserving, then it's not a bad it. idea to do it. Yes. Yeah. This is one thing, you have mm -hmm. to prepare the machine. The second one is you have 
to prepare your firewall. What does that mean? You need some outgoing configuration. Mm -hmm. and so in the firewall you have an outbound configuration, you have an inbound yeah. configuration. We are just talking about the outbound configuration. If you want to use mobile applications from the internet or uh, our desktop application from the internet, mm -hmm. then you have also to tweak the inbound configuration. Yeah, so classic example is home office. Yes, something like uh, if you have a VPN structure, then no. Yeah, but true. Mm -hmm. w whatever. Um, this is another tutorial where we are talking about how you do the certificate setup, how you do the routing, how you do the firewalling. So this is a separate tutorial. So okay. we are just talking about what do I have to open to the internet. To be able to communicate yes. effectively. Yes, effectively. Mm -hmm. um, you need a couple of things uh, uh, which you need to know. You need access to mypascom.net. Why? AT and 443, so HTTP, HTTPS, because the service communicating or your on-site service communicating with our services mm -hmm. about licensing. Yep. That's it basically about the subscription. Okay. So this has to work. And push services. So if you have push services to your mobile phones, then that's also via my passcode. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then there is another option. We provide you a mail infrastructure, CloudMX. Um, and if you don't want to use your own mail server, you can use ours. You can use ours. So that's the default. You can change that. But if you want to use it, you have to open the ports okay. for it. Um, then you need time, so you need NTP. Yep. Um, per default, we use pool.ntp.org, mm -hmm. uh, which is a pool, like the name <laughs> says, and you cannot know which target hosts there are, so okay. you have to allow UDP123, so the port for NTP, for everywhere that we can do time synchronization. Good. But that's it. Well, the next thing they need to be able to do a virtual uh, machine is our ISO file. Yeah, that's hard without the ISO file. Yeah, where you do they can, get that from? Yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can just download it from our homepage without registration. So it's just available here. And then you can go uh, to the downloads. And here you have always the latest ISO file you can start with. That's what we do now. Uh, I use here Fusion from VMware, but it does not matter what you use, if you use um, Hyper-V, if you use uh, I6, yeah. ESX, uh, okay. e. whatever. Whatever. Yeah, the, the whole German, uh, uh, German English, English. IE, it's, it's, whatever, yeah. It's a complicated for us, uh, yeah. the VMware server, let's call yes. it like this. It does not matter. You just click pl uh, plus in my uh, scenario, you select the ISO file like in most um, virtual machines. Then this is also very common that it asks you what operating system is this to have a kind of template. It's not crucial, but it is a Ubuntu core 64-bit. Um, so I choose that and I want to do some customizations. Call this PASCOM18. Save. What we do now is we have to adapt the settings. We have to have uh, two gigabytes of RAM. I use the two cores. Then what I do here is I change the network adapter to our uh, test network, which is that one. You can do it um, also if you want to test around with it. You can also do it in the NAT network. Most mm -hmm. virtual machines or most hypervisor provide this desktop. Um, hypervisor pro provide this that you can say I want the NAT network yeah. and then you can be behind that and play around and it creates its own network. The drawback is if you want to connect some real phones, mm -hmm. hardware phones, where to connect them because you cannot access this capsulated NAT network. You can access it with the PASCOM client mm -hmm. for sure because it's also on your desktop. Yeah, but no problem to play around with but as a rule if you want to play around with hardware you need to have a network for that. Yes. So, because we do this in future, we set it up like this. Then we hit the big play button. We get a nice styled welcome screen. We skip it. Yeah, press enter. Don't wait the 14 seconds. Yes. No. Yeah, you can. You can watch the beauty of our logo <laughs> if you like. Brainwashing branding. Yes. Okay, it's booted. 
Then it says, hello. It says, I will destroy all the data on your hard disk. You agree with that. It has a host name. It's uh, automatically generated. And then you have the option of static configuration of the network or DHCP. If you're in the NAT network of your desktop hypervisor, you can use DHCP. If you like, we go for static. The network is this. We use, let's say, five. Hopefully nobody uses this. Netmask, our gateway is that one. Name server, we can use the Google one, which you can easily remember. You can use a secondary, if not just press return. Now it does the stuff for you, mm -hmm. hopefully. And then that's it with the setup. So it's not that's it with the setup, it's wrong. We did not write anything to the hard disk for now. But we try to get out of the text UI as soon as possible to yeah. do all the configuration. Which to make follows. it a little bit more straightforward for admins to yes. do the actual configuration. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what we uh, what we show you is the IP address you configured, and then you just go to your browser and go into there like this. Here we have a self-signed certificate, so don't be afraid. That's because it's self-signed for the start, as usual in that uh, systems. And then you get into a shiny wizard. You need a license. This is the first step you need to do. Uh, to don't waste time, we start with the inter installation in background. Um, you go to my Passcom where you need an account. I'm already logged in as Matthias. If you don't have an account, you can create one on the fly. And you can add a subscription, and you can add a subscription including two concurrent users for free. So that's very easy. Um, I select a name. I have some, but hello world. That's it. Then it says thank you. You say next. It appears you can pair it. And then you're back on your local system. So this was the short journey <laughs> to uh, mypascom.net where you can mm -hmm. create a subscription and you pair your installation. And that's also why you have to open your firewall to mypascom from the server because the server is obtaining the license. It's not enough if you can browse to mypascom mm -hmm. on your local machine, the server has to obtain the license. So that's it. Then you can create an administrator. Um, you need an email address, you need a password. This is the administrator for the whole stack. So for configuring the network, for doing all the licensing stuff and so on and so forth. Then you can create the actual phone system. This needs a little bit of explanation. Yep. I just set up the phone system. Why do I need to set up a phone system? Yeah, so it's sort of two parts. Matthias yes. alluded to it to the full stack. It's there's we've got the management console, which has a lot more for the network infrastructure, session border controller, and so on. And then we have the phone system. Yes. So this is why it's sort of a two step process on yes. this one. And the phone system, if you're going through the cloud and not on site, then you just get access to the phone system. Exactly. Because we you, do as else. an on site administrative guru, <laughs> yep you get access to the management and to the particular phone system. So it needs a name. Yeah. The only name I know is Pascom. You need a <laughs> language, you need a time zone. Um, and we're putting it into German, are we? Did I something wrong? Too late, I think. It's too late. But never mind, we can carry on in German. It's, 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 it's never too late. Okay. Can you see? I repeat this step. And then I can redo this. You are on autopilot, you clicked English, USA. Yes, and yes, yes, yep. yes, 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 yes. <coughs> Reboot. So that's it. And then it reboots. Mm -hmm. And after that, we can access the phone system, we can access the management, we mm -hmm. can access everything. This takes a while, so don't Go away from the screen? Yes, you can go away from the screen because okay. you can just um, reopen it, but it takes a while. Even if it's booted completely, you can see it's up and running online again. Mm -hmm. So you might think ah, it's booted and the screen is still there and you can panic, but it has 
I.O. on the hard disk and on the network, so it prepares your containers now. Okay. So it prepares your management, it prepares your PBX, mm -hmm. and it can take a few minutes until you can go to the management. What are the next steps then if you did that? Um, one thing you can do is now then set up the certificates, set up everything you need to access from outside, so tweak your firewall, you have mm -hmm. an extra tutorial for that. Yep. That's what you can do. Um, or you just go directly into your phone system then, and if you go into the phone system, then it continues with the same workflow as like in the cloud. So mm -hmm. you can watch the video for the initial setup then, yeah. how to configure your users and whatever. So this is how you can continue. It's important if you want to be able to access from the outside world with a mobile application and so on, then don't invite your users now and do everything and then right. say, okay, now I do the certificate stuff because you have to prepare everything and then you have to do it again because maybe the URL changes yeah. because you have then a DNS name and you mm -hmm. have a valid certificate then. Okay. So if you choose to have mobile applications, if you want to have access from the internet and do it now. now, as opposed to annoying your 50 odd users or whatever you may have uh, mm -hmm. in two days time when yes. you had the certificate and everything up and running. That would not be would not go down very well. No. So anyway, I hope that's clarified the virtual machine setup for you. Um, yeah, uh, if you've got any questions about uh, PASCOM phone systems and setups and so on, and how to go further with the actual uh, PBX configuration, join us on Thursday for our Thursday bootcamp, uh, where we go through from sort of zero to 100 um, inside. 99, 100 is yeah, too there's, expensive. Yeah, there's always tweaks that can yes. be done, yeah. Um, but you can get your questions answered in the Q&A session. Um, but yeah, that's every Thursday, PASCOM bootcamp. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you. Bye.